This is Andy Tube, and this video is Rockabye Cocoa, and it's part 14 of my Cocoa Goes to the Spa series. In this video, I'm going to show you and talk about, demonstrate, and show you some close up pictures of the cradle system for the Singer Model 301 and 301A. I'm just going to call it 301 because it's the they're 301 and 301A are basically the same machine. They both use the same cradle. Uh, this is the top view of the cradle right here. Uh, this is the felt, uh, you know, to soak up the oil. And uh, it's Singer part number 170112. And uh, the cradle's made out of steel. And uh, let me let me show you a close-up picture of it here. Let me turn this over, and I'll show you the bottom side or the back side of the cradle here. And you'll see that it's got uh, two heavy steel. I guess I'll call them cross members here that uh, support the cradle and keep it from uh, twisting or rocking and shifting around a little bit like that. And uh, all of the parts uh, are connected together with uh, steel rivets. There's uh, no screws um, that hold it together. Let me show you a picture. Uh, by the way, if you do look for the part number stamped on here, it is under this uh, crossbar member right here. Uh, it's the part number uh, 170112 and Simanco Singer Manufacturing Company. Uh, USA. I'll show you that. This part here is the latch system. Latch system. And I call I just call this the thumb rest for the latch. And you operate the latch by pushing it down with your thumb to release the machine and letting it go to hold the machine. This part here, Singer doesn't name or identify. I call it the finger grip because it gives you, you know, something to hold on to, kind of pull up a little while you're pushing down uh, instead of just pushing on the latch like that. So I just call that the finger grip. But you see the latch here. Um, has a cross member here and a tab and from the thumb lever it's all connected underneath here it latches on to the base of the machine and this tab uh, latches on to the uh, near side base of the machine here it is up close On the back side of the cradle, you can see the bottom of the latch itself here. And you'll see this uh, steel shaft running through to a couple of tabs that are formed in the base. And that's what the latch swivels on. And this uh, latch shaft also holds the latch spring. It's a strong coiled spring here. You, you see the piece of the spring resting in a little notch on the latch and then the tail coming off and 
using the bottom of the cradle for a brace. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never seen this anywhere, but since you have a, a swivel here, uh, tabs and the latch and the shaft, I do put a drop of oil right here on the swivel points. Uh, it's metal to metal. It is painted, but I've had these get kind of squeaky and the spring gets squeaky. And I've seen rusty uh, areas form here and on the spring. So I put a drop of oil here once in a while, you know, once a year or something, twice a year. And I also put a drop of oil on the shaft right above that and let the oil run into the inside of the spring and uh, just work it a little bit. And if I have my oil brush, I'll dip it in oil and I'll come and put a little coating on that spring. Because like I said, I have seen them get rusty. Uh, not here in Arizona, but uh, I'm sure in many parts of the world it's more humid than the desert here. And uh, they can get squeaky, like I said. So please consider that. Like I said, I've I never seen that in a manual or anything. That's just a personal experience. But let me show you the latch shaft and spring system. Now these two parts that stand up here are called the uh, hinge connectors or hinge connections. Uh, so on a on a machine that usually mounts in a can be mounted in a cabinet on the back base of the machine there's little holes and the hinge pins from the from the machine hinges go into the hole and a set screw holds them on and that's how you hang your machine down into the cabinet. Well that's what these are for. If you look at the 301 in the back there's no holes for hinge uh, hinge pins. There's no way to put this right to the hinges in a cabinet. That's what the cradle system is for. A very very unique. The only machine Singer made a cradle for with this uh, cabinet mounted cradle that actually holds the machine and then the machine can be lifted up right out of it very quickly and very easily. So that's what these uh, machine hinge connections are for and you see that there's holes for the hinge pins right here right and then they go right through for the hinge pin Take a look at these up close. Okay, and then where uh, where uh, the Singer machine would have uh, set screws for the hinge pins in the base of the machine, this has a set screw in the machine hinge connection the same way. And these set screws are part of the cradle. And, and they should be included when you buy a cradle, and sometimes they are not. So if you're buying one online, be sure you see these in the picture, or specifically ask the seller if these connection set screws are uh, in place. Because if they're not, uh, you, you know, you're going to have to find them or find something that you can use and to me that would make the cradle less uh, that would lower the price on the cradle so here's a picture a uh, close-up of that uh, hinge screw in place now also in this machine hinge connection post or, or stand part here there's a rubber grommet in each one and it, it, it goes right right through to the back. See there you can see the the hinge and the and the grommet. They go right through. And there's one on the other one. Here. Right there. 
It goes, like I said, white right through. And uh, they're kind of a unique uh, grommet. I'll show you a picture because they're, they're wide. I, I really have trouble finding grommets to replace this. And if anybody knows where I can get these uh, wider ones, like the, you'll see in the picture I show you, I wish you'd let me know. Now these grommets are in here to cushion the machine. When, when you put the 301 in here, and it's going, uh, part of the machine is going to, to rest on here and cushion it a little bit and brace it. So it protects the machine from these metal parts and scratching the paint on the machine. But it also acts as kind of an anti-vibration. It, 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 when you lock the machine into the cradle, it can press up against there and hold it firm and keep it from rattling uh, due to vibration. So take a look at these uh, close-up pictures of the grommet. And these, these are part of the cradle and should be there. But they can often be dried out. Uh, the seller I bought this from, this, is, this cradle is in very good condition. And the price to me uh, was reasonable. Uh, compared to a lot of them I saw and the and the grommets are in very nice condition also and I'll be mentioning this uh, seller and give you a heads up where where I got this because it was a very good transaction and I, I did some email communications with him but in the meantime the other another part of this here are these are the cradle studs and they're they're a conical shape stud like little cones here on the on the right side of the cradle the hand wheel end of the cradle and they are made to fit into holes on the base of the machine way down at the bottom below the hand wheel uh, the hand wheel side and the machine s uh, slips into this cradle and you line up those studs into the holes in the machine and that holds the back uh, right side of the hand wheel end side of the machine very firmly and between that and the latch on the left side the machine is very securely held in the grommets and uh, you don't get a vibration and movement and stuff so take a look at these uh, studs the cradle studs they're called. Okay, and now I've got Coco propped up at an angle here. I, I wanted to show you where the holes for those studs are made into the machine. And I don't know if they were cast this way. It almost looked like they were drilled, but that's where the studs slide into to, to hold this end of the machine in place and I do have a close-up picture picture uh, of it of the area before I clean cocoa so let me show you that so you can see that up close too now later in the video I'll be sh I'll be showing you some more how to mount the cradle into a cabinet how to uh, set your machine into the cradle and how the studs line up and the latch system works and so forth and everything I've shown you so par far is part of the cradle system uh, that's how it came from the uh, factory with the, with the felt and the set screws and you know the rubber grommets and the spring and latch everything that's all uh, a, a part of the cradle but to mount the cradle into the cabinet you need some other parts some of them are common parts and some are a little more specialized but these parts that I'm talking about are not uh, parts of the cradle and they're called uh, cabinet trimmings cabinet trimmings and to mount the cradle into the cabinet you need machine hinges 
And these are the same hinges that are in most Singer cabinets. And they have the mounting base and they have a, a swivel and they have a hinge pin. And they have one or two screws for, for each one, wood screws. And they sit in a recessed area in the back of the cabinet that I'll be showing you and they screw in. Okay. And then that's how the machine hangs down into the cabinet when you close it and then can swing up and rest flat when you lift up your machine to use it. And remember these machine hinge connections with the set screw, that's where those go in. Just like they'd go into the base of, a, of most Singer machines, these just slide right in there and then you tighten that, uh, whoops, they slide right in here. Here's a better picture. Um, and then you tighten the set screw back here and that's what holds the cradle when it's hanging down into uh, the cabinet if you've got the machine mounted and then you you know it would swing up and you could lift up the cradle with the 301 in it and lock it in to some more parts I'm going to show you and uh, the nice part of this is if you have it up raised up like this and the 301 sitting there at cabinet level and you want to lift the 301 out you know you lift the machine out you just release that latch and and move the machine a little bit away from the studs and lift it right out and then you can just leave the the tray system sitting right there in the cabinet uh, level you don't have to lower it back down into the machine. You can just leave it sitting right there level and close the cabinet if you want. So when you return, you open the cabinet lids, you know, fold them open, and just set the machine right back in the cradle. And that's, I, I kind of like that. It's kind of a nice feature. Um, so, let me show you some, uh, whoops, I'll get that out. Let me, let me show you some uh, better pictures here of these machine hinges. Okay, now here's the other parts you need to use this cradle system properly in a cabinet. And they are called a machine stop bracket and they consist of a machine stop bracket uh -huh, that is mounted to the little folding piece up in the front of the cabinet and they include the machine stop which is really kind of a machine rest this is what the base of the machine and stuff will rest on instead of steel to steel and then it's, they have a couple of wood screws uh, some of them have three to mount this bracket and I and I will be showing you more um, you know more more uh, pictures and showing it in place and so forth and I just noticed one of these screws is different from the other three so this was replaced huh. but these are these are common wood screws these are flathead bugle screws I think they call them so I can replace that uh, without a problem. I don't know why that's different. That's how it was when I bought it. But the, the, there, there's two or three different brackets like this. And they're all basically the same. And they have different stops. I think the original one, let me just kind of set a stop in here to show you. It fits up here. So it would be pinched between the wood and the bracket, that little folding wood shelf. It would sit up here. These are a little more rare. This is like a fiber. It's like a curled, coiled piece of fiber. And I've only seen this a couple times before. And I don't know if, if the original hard rubber stops 
were lost or cracked in a shop or a repairman did these um, or if these were part of a different uh, stop bracket and they use this uh, fiber uh, more commonly I've seen cork pieces like this and I've seen the, the hard rubber and they're 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 kind of glued in with a very light glue uh, rubber cement type of thing and you know they can peel off and stuff but it was common especially for the cork to dry out and get cracked and stuff and the rubber stops to get kinda harder and uh, I kinda like the fiber ones actually they didn't the first time I saw them I thought oh what the heck is this but then they work great and uh, the, the, the fiber kinda crushes down but it stays uh, you know it does the job real well of the machine stopping on top of those and when you would you know bring up the cradle and you would you know, fold your cabinet wood strip back and bring up the cradle and then set them together uh, what's happening here is this little uh, post, this little flat post that sticks out sets in this uh, rectangular hole and it kind of really sets in there like that and locks good and and that's what is supporting the, the cabinet and then the actual stop of the stop bracket would be here and let the machine stop on that hope that's making sense and I'll, I'll be showing that in action and stuff more but let me let me show you a close-up of it anyway so these are the uh, machine stop brackets okay they're kind of interesting looking aren't they I, I like the way that they're real secure and I think that was designed. They're kind of a heavy-duty bracket. And uh, let's see if I can move this a little bit here. You may have noticed on the 301s that there's kind of a kind of a notch here. If you see the machine in person, and and that uh, system was kind of made to make room for that for this the part that holds the stop. Okay, and that kept the rest of the machine away from the steel parts. And Coco has some scratches down here. And that's usually from somebody scratching it. Not being careful enough when they put it in and out of the cradle. Or their cabinet doesn't have the right stop bracket. And they just kind of rigged something up or forced it in there. Um, and... I've, I've bought ones where they have the cradle but they don't have these brackets and they kind of use the existing brackets or some other bracket and when you look at it, the machine is not even sitting level uh, <laughs> in the in the cradle because the cradles well the cradles not sitting level in the cabinet let me let me put it that way so really um, for optimal of course you need the hinges the machine hinges you, you need the machine hinges to you know to hang the cradle in there but but you really should get these uh, stop brackets that are made to work with the cradle that that lock in that little that little tab sets and locks into the uh, stop bracket like that so it can't slide off and so forth very very good system okay and as I said these are not part of the cradle these are called cabinet trimmings just like a, a drawer pull or a drawer knob or a handle on a cabinet would be called a cabinet trimming these are all cabinet trimmings 
Now, uh, sometimes the seller will just sell the cradle and uh, you just, like I said, you want to be sure it's got grommets and you want to be sure especially that those set screws are in the cradle and they should be. And then some will include the uh, machine hinges for the cradle and that's nice. You, you can buy these separate, I don't know, 10 bucks maybe for a pair. But very few, in my experience, very few include the stop brackets. The matching stop brackets for the cradle. And in, in the business, we would call it a, a cradle and bits. B-I-T-S. Bits. These cabinet trimmings and slime, we call them bits. So you'd say, hey, I'm looking for a cradle and bits. Meaning that you, you want these, you know. And if you were looking for the whole setup, you, you would, you, what you would ask a dealer or somebody that you knew that carried parts is, uh, we call it, I'm looking for, I need pins, cradle, and bits. So you need the hinges, the cradle, and the bits or the stop bracket. Here's a little trivia for you, a bit you never heard about. <laughs> okay, so uh, now the 301 can mount in uh, a few different cabinets and many other uh, Singer cabinets and even non-Singer cabinets can be modified to take the cradle but I'll show you what the standard setup would be um, in a cabinet for all this and I'll, I'll show you why some cabinets, even Singer cabinets, I'll show you why they need to be modified. Okay, so uh, I'm here at one of the cabinets that I have and um, I'm going to show you about the flat edge. Uh, this is what I call the lift up or fold up uh, like that. And I, I first want to say that um, for the correct opening here with the correct type of stop brackets, um, the cutout opening is about 7 and 1 8 inch. And from the uh, stop itself, in this case it's a hard rubber stop, from the steel back of this stop holder uh, to the cutout is about a 6 and 7 eighths. And, and of course uh, many of the openings are like this. This is 16 and 3, uh, 16 and 5 eighths, I would guess. A lot of these cutouts this way are 17 inch. And uh, if you're if you're using a non-singer table or singer table, you need to modify. What you want to do is to see the the spread of the pins, like from the center of the pin to the center of the pin. Um, yeah, I used to know this by heart. I think it's nine and three quarter. I'm assuming you're going to have the cradle and you'll be able to measure that. But you got to pay attention too to how far from the front of the cutout to the first pin. Because uh, some, some tables, the pin spread is okay, but this area is shorter. But um, that, that is about two and a half inches. So you'll have to take a look at that. But the main thing here I wanted to show you was these type of uh, stop brackets fit on a smooth edge fold-up piece. This is totally flat here. And you see uh, this, this table was uh, one that definitely takes a 301 or a, a 401 or 404. 
and it's got all the right uh, setups and to um, mount that now I don't have that little fiber piece you know but it but it sits just like that so it has to rest flat so that the bottom part of the bracket rests flat down here and that the overlap part of the bracket with the stop rests flat. Makes sense, right? Okay. Um, let me let me show you a, a close up of that. You can look at that while I move my equipment around because I have a, a, another cabinet I'll show you. It's a type that would need to be modified. Now here's another uh, Singer cabinet and uh, on the fold up here a lot of these went to a different uh, way. This is a, a little bit later uh, table meaning um, newer than the one I showed you before and you can see on this they they don't even have brackets uh, <laughs> you know they, they, they save money of uh, putting these cabinet trimmings on there so they came along here and the wood is not cut fl uh, flat you see how it, it, it kinda comes out here comes along flat but then they just uh, left this wood on here and then there's one tiny staple on each of these little kind of vinyl or rubber um, stops so they just staple the stop right to this little wood ledge that protrudes out and, uh, and I'm sure that was a cost saving uh, thing for them yeah, with your newer models and so forth but the uh, it, since this this part isn't flat in here where the stop has to be let's see I've got a right stop so let me, let me scoot over here a little bit where the stop has to be uh, would be over in here and you, you, you can see, you can see it can't it can't mount this this part which which should be um, oh here sorry this this part uh, no it should it should be like that yeah so it should mount like this to the fold up piece of wood but over here it's it's going to be unmountable it's not secure now the other parts of the cabinet let's check the opening there uh, 16 and 5 8 that looks good my first pin is centered at a two and a half from the edge and the difference uh, from center to center about nine and three quarters that's all standard because it's a it's a singer table but here's the problem so if you remember that the opening in the other cabinet I just showed you that had the flat it was a seven and an eighth and it's seven and an eighth to the flat part here but this part of course protrudes into the opening and that is only a tiny bit less than seven like seven inches minus about a thirty second so to modify this you would have to uh, pull, the, pull the staples out and pull these stops out and then you'd have to uh, cut or saw or plane or sand down and take off that uh, protruded piece of wood that they left there and make the whole thing flat like it is on the outer edges and if that is done then the the stops for your cradle would uh, be able to be you know mounted securely 
in the proper places of course you'd have to you know a measure where to mount them because you're not going to have any holes pre-drilled here and what I've done is just uh, you, you know c cut this off and planed it smooth and sand it down where I wanted it I mounted the cradle on the hinge pins and then brought it out here and kind of held the cradle to see exactly where I needed to put the the uh, screw locations you know put my bracket there and say okay this is where I want the stop to be and this is where I want that uh, lock area for the tab on the cradle and then I'll just mark the holes and pre-drill them and mount them and it's very successful and I have not done it myself but I have seen where the 301 cradle and other Singer machines have been mounted into non Singer cabinets sometimes the hinge pins had to be <clears throat> excuse me had to be moved or um, you know the what I call a fold up piece here had to be a modified but it can certainly be done so there are uh, tables designed that can hold the 301 but you can also modify and uh, let, let me uh, get show you a, a close-up picture of this and then I've got it like marked in red and stuff what you'd have to uh, take off to mount a 301 cradle in this cabinet if you if you liked it Maybe I can show you a little bit of the cabinet style there. Kind of a maple, I guess I would call it, cabinet. And then let me show you the style. You saw this before in the very beginning, one of the beginning videos of Coco. Uh, this blonde cabinet, you know, with the brass poles and the, the I think they call this a pencil leg. And it's got a brass down uh, about two or three inches high coming up the wood at the bottom of the leg. But let me show you that picture, and then I'm, I'm going to show you uh, the uh, mounting for the cradle, how it looks. Okay, so back here now, this this cabinet already has the, the, the cradle mounted mm. that's why I used it for the beginning of the Coco series but to bring up the cradle it would be just like bringing up um, a sewing machine that's on the hinge you would fold up this front piece of wood and then you would come down and lift up your machine but in this case you're lifting up the cradle and then you put your fold up down and then you're going to lower the cradle onto the stops uh, uh, I mean onto the stop bracket like this and, and lock it in like that so remember I showed you the little tabs on here and how they they go into the cut out in this area here for support so that's what how this locks in like that and then it is very very secure in there and let me uh, actually maybe I'll leave that up let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on that uh, hinge machine hinge that's about the best I can do there so there's a uh, depressed area where the mounting of the mm, hinge takes place with the screw and then the pin comes out the pin goes into the machine hinge connector post and the set screw is right is underneath here on the bottom I don't know if you'll be able to yeah you, you won't be able to see that's the only thing I don't like about this when you put the set screws in you gotta like kneel down on the floor and peek under here to see that set screw 
but you're usually only mounting the cradle once or your machine once you know so mounting the cradle is the same as mounting a machine and then that's the uh, you know we call it the lollipop hinge and this part here mounts in flush screws in the hinge is built in right here and then the pin comes in so if you wanted to lower the machine in this case you'd have a 301 locked in the cradle and you can just lower it down in there and let it hang just like you would any uh, machine you see the hinge cutouts and everything and, uh, and of course you can bring it up like this you know and then you can lower it down and lock it in on these stop brackets Oops, I should have backed out before I showed you that. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, it comes up just like any machine would swing up this high. Put your fold out down, you would lower the machine, or in this case, just the cradle, and it locks in on those stop brackets. Just like that. Very secure and very strong. So, I'm going to give you a close-up shot I think I had the cradle hanging down here maybe in the shot I can't remember but I'm going to show it to you now I'll do a little slide with this uh, close-up area okay okay so I mentioned in one of the segments here about uh, I like the fact that you can leave the cradle up in this position. It, 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 you know, like in this case, I took Coco out of here to send her to the spa. But I don't have to close this uh, down uh, to close the top of the cabinet. I can just leave it right here. So when Coco comes home from the spa, I can set her right in here. I can just set it right down in here. And uh, I'm going to get her cousin Oh oh and I'm going to show you how that how that kind of looks to install. I don't think I did this close up before. So I'm going to show you a picture uh, I took of a 301 in the cradle and I'm pretty sure it's it's the cradle about to be locked in to try and give you a shot of that mechanism and then I'm gonna put uh oh in the cradle so let me show you the close-up of this okay so of course here's here's poor old uh oh with her damaged paint and stuff and uh, if, if you had your machine lifted out of the cradle right push that lever and pull it out and you you maybe took it to uh, a quilting club or you moved it to a big work table where you were sewing big big pieces of quilt and the cabinet was a little small so you you set it up like a portable on another place now you want to return it to the cabinet. It's very simple that you will um, line up these two stud holes in the base with the studs. And I usually have the uh, table extension folded up so I can see the latch better. But you just want to set it down in there a little bit forward of the studs and bring it back so that the studs go into the stud hole and then you're going to lower the nose end of it into that latch and then you can fold down your extension table and away you go your 301's back in business here 
and then when you want to take it out the next time of course you will fold up that you'll get to the latch and push it down lift the nose away from the latch and just move the machine towards the nose and about an inch so that the studs are out of the stud hole and then lift it right up and out so the hand wheel end down into the cradle first and then start lowering it and slide it back so the studs go into the stud hole and then lower the nose so the latch engages and that's good and then you can store the machine hanging down in the cabinet just like any other machine we'll just lift that back a little bit like you would pull up your fold up and lower the machine I better put the handle down here lower the machine down into the cabinet and let it you know let it let it hang down in there like any other machine and then you could close the top of the cabinet so a very unique machine like I said the only the only uh, machine singer ever made a cradle system to make to make their machine so portable like that Ta-da! <laughs> okay, now uh, stay tuned here in this next uh, segment. I'm going to give you a tip about another good vendor named Norm. And that's who I bought my latest cradle from. And I bought some other vintage parts and I communicated back and forth with him. So I'd like to give you a, a heads up about him and his uh, store on eBay. Okay, everybody, uh, before I wrapped up this, uh, this uh, part, this video of uh, Rockabye Coco, I wanted to give you a tip to a new vendor that I have found. Um, and I bought a cradle from him, and I bought a really beautiful complete tension unit for the 401 series. Uh, wow, it's nice. I was really happy to find it and um, back and forth commun communicating with the owner of this his name is Norm you know I asked for permission to use the pictures of that cradle because they were so nice and he readily agreed and he said look uh, you know one of my missions is to help save these vintage machines from the trash pile and uh, he said he procures about a hundred machines per year and when you think about that, that's a couple of weeks, a couple per week. That's that's a lot of machines. Now he has mostly done f from a treadle machines up to the Model 301A, like like Coco. But he had recently uh, purchased some uh, 400 and 500 series, and he was uh, planning to start putting up vintage parts for those machines um, and I see by looking at his what I call store on eBay that he's that he's started doing that and the, the name of this seller is ZL Vintage ZL Vintage and I'll put a link to his uh, home page of the store in the information below the video uh, this video and I I did uh, just go now and was looking at his items for sale he has 44 up right now and you can see he's got uh, cabinet hinges and uh, bobbin uh, cases of bobbins and here's some uh, pulleys um, from treadle and here's a wood pitman for a treadle base and uh, solid brass drawer knob so he's he's he tries to get all of these parts um, now here's some 401a parts collection and uh, here's a, a 
button style for a um, foot controller for a 221 and some more treadle parts and, and so forth and uh, I gotta tell you the, the parts I got from him were some of the cleanest vintage parts I ever got um, so he has since I spoke with him originally about a month ago I see he's got uh, four, 400 and 500 parts here here's a part lot here um, yeah I might I might buy this one myself I just realized that he's including the bobbin case oh, feed dog multi-purpose foot needle holder bobbin winder tension that's that's pretty nice <laughs> 35 bucks and the free shipping um, Here's a motor, a PA9 motor for the 400 series, um, like I uh, restored in, in my series on my channel, where I showed how to restore that. And it looks uh, clean like the other stuff he sent me. <laughs> so, you know, in conversation with him, when I first went to his store to buy something, or his place on eBay, uh, I noticed that as of this May he's been on eBay for 19 years and that's a pretty dedicated uh, thing to be buying a hundred machines and salvaging usable parts and so forth so uh, here's here's the the nose cover for a 401 uh, 403 404 here's a uh, bobbin uh, case uh, separate for the four or five hundred series for nineteen bucks free shipping. Look how clean that thing is! Wow, look at that. That looks like you used the ultrasonic cleaner on it, maybe. Wow, and then uh, a positioning bracket that he's got here. Here's the hook and the uh, hook. I think it's positioning or holding bracket he's got for 18 bucks. Uh, here's the bottom tray drip pan in perfect condition. Um, yeah, it looks great. And look at that. Now he's including the screw and the th and the thumb nut with the pan in that price. That's a very good price because uh, I've I've seen many of just these parts right here listed for 10 bucks alone and then of course you know I'm not getting into it here but he's got treadles and uh, parts for model 66 and 99 and uh, 201 um, so all of you who do that here's a here's a 500 or 503 a complete tension unit with the thread guide brackets and, and look at that now see he's a good seller because he's even including the the stud set screw that goes in from the nose to hold that in place and I don't see that very often so he understands uh, the machine you know he just didn't find one at a garage sale and take off a few parts um, 100 machines a year you can see the difference one thing that really intrigued me was that he sells, and before he had two of these, now I only seen, see one. So this is um, a 201, model 201 potted motor, and he has rebuilt it, he's rewired it, and cleaned it all up. And it's, you know, to me it looks like it's ready to be installed on your uh, machine. <laughs> I don't see that too often either. So, um, my experience with him was, was first class. You know, I ordered, he shipped right away, I got the parts, they were very well packaged. The, um, mm, the tension unit I bought for the 401 was just v very well protected and it was shipped in a box and, and, and everything like that. And that's why I started communicating with him. To you. And I told him, man, I said, you're a good photographer, Norm, can I use your pictures? And he said, yeah, do whatever you want. 
you know you can use any picture you want off my website um, I just encourage people I, I love to, to, to help them the vintage sewing machine enthusiast who's looking for parts and and want to get their machine restored or running or a missing or broken part replaced um, you know like he said his mission is is to keep them out of the trash pile so these are the kind of uh, seller or vendor that I like to support because I you know I want Norm to stay in business and be successful because um, it, you know undoubtedly I'm going to need parts and to have a trusted supplier who's got a good price and provides good service is uh, very nice you know it's like foxy finds for you with the LED bulbs you know it's like thrifty farm girl and it's like Dwayne so this is uh, Norm with ZL Vintage on eBay is uh, a vendor I can very confidently recommend that you'll get a good uh, part from him and you'll get good service like I did okay so I want to thank you for watching this uh, part of uh, Rockabye Coco and all about the cradle and system and so forth and the next part uh, 15 is going to be the end of the Coco goes to the spa series because Coco's coming home from the spa and she's going to go back in her cradle and back in her cabinet and be all refreshed and rehabilitated and re ready to perform at peak performance uh, for her new owner. Uh, thanks again for watching uh, Andy Tube, and I hope to see you for part 15, the finale of Coco Goes to the Spa. Take care now.